there's way too many books in here. How am I going to read all these books? Oh, this ain't beats everything. So my inner voice is obviously the voice of Don Knotts. Whenever I look at my bookshelves, I see way too many books that I'm probably never going to finish in my lifetime. Hi, guys. This is Hope from Pros Before Bros. Thank you for tuning back in. Um, I'm dropping shit. This is great. Uh, so you probably, sorry, I didn't mean to give y'all a boob shot. Um, so you probably just saw my video on Contemporary Thon. Um, yeah, I'm in a different setting right now because the second bedroom or my, my studio, if you will, is hot as hell. I can't deal with it. It's ridiculous. It's September 22nd and it's 90 degrees outside. Whatever. So I have a, a little light over here. It is a little bit, a little bit high. Well, we'll tune it down a little bit. Um, and that was actually my husband that did the Donuts impression. So every time that I buy a book and I start getting anxiety for having too many books to read, he does that voice and cheers me up a bit. Makes uh, a morose situation that much better. So I haven't done a haul with you guys in quite a few months, but don't worry, rest assured, I got a lot of books during those a uh, few months. So we're going to go ahead and talk about those books right now. Um, so the first book that I got, well, let's do a count. This is just some of them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. John? Yes? I got 16 new books. There are way too many books. How are we going to read all these books? This is my life, ladies and gentlemen. So, 16 new books to discuss. And unfortunately, that doesn't that doesn't cover half of the other books that I didn't bring in. Um, so, the first book that I actually picked up is something I've been anticipating for a while. It's uh, by Lisa Grunwald, Time After Time. And here is the cover. So I actually heard about this book through my Amazon feed. So you know how Amazon, not Amazon, what was it? Facebook feed. You know how Facebook sometimes all the time like sneaks attacks you and spies on you and see what you're currently enjoying? So like this week for me, Besides books, it was recommending Oats Overnight because I was trying to find like easy, quick fixes for breakfast. You know, being that, that I'm a diabetic, I need to eat on a regular basis. Uh, it was time to kind of incorporate some breakfast in my life. So it's introduced me to that. It introduced me to a couple other things. And it's just so creepy when it does it. That, that was one of those things that it recommended. Um, every time that it recommends a book, I usually go on Amazon, look at it. Um, and then, of course, I go on Goodreads for the final decision whether I'm going to pick up this book. And this book actually had a lot of good reviews on Goodreads. So it is about, let's just go ahead and read it, shall we? The synopsis, not the whole book. Um, magical love story inspired by the legend of a woman who vanished from Grand Central Terminal, sweeps readers from the... 1920s to World War II and beyond. So on a clear December morning in 1937 at the famous gold clock at Grand Central Terminal, Joe Reynolds, a hardworking railroad man from Queens, meets a vibrant young woman who seems mysteriously out of place. Nora Ling Lansing is a Manhattan socialite whose flapper clothing, pearl earrings, and talk of the Roaring Twenties doesn't seem to match the bleak mood of the Depression-era New York. Um, so, obviously a lot going on here. It covers the 1920s, it covers the 40s, roughly a little bit, um, the Great Depression, it talks about that. Um, it's a love story, it takes place in New York, so there's a lot of cool things going on with it. And of course, it talks about time travel. Um, and I think I've told you guys before, I've always had a fascination with time travel, so naturally, Yes, I had to pick up this book. Um, I believe Amazon has it for, it was either 11 or $12. I think I might have 5% off on it at one point. 
Um, so yes, if you are interested in this book, definitely check it out. If you've read it, let me know about it. So moving on. Um, the next three books I'm going to talk about are book of the month that I got through August and maybe June, if I remember correctly. Um, so actually once in September, I apologize. Maybe two, maybe three. I don't know, but we're going to talk about them. Um, the 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. I think a lot of people have been discussing this book. It seems like everywhere I turn on YouTube and Facebook, this book has been discussed in great detail. A lot of people are saying that this is going to be one of those reads from 2019 that are like make the most memorable list of uh, some sort. <clears throat> so I did pick this up just on a whim um and it is well let's just read it in a sprawling mansion filled with peculiar treasures january seller is a curiosity herself as the ward of a wealthy mr lock she feels very different from the artifacts that decorate the halls carefully maintained largely ignored and utterly out place feels a little different uh then she finds a strange book, a book that carries the scent of other worlds and tale, tells a tale of secret doors of love, adventure, and danger. Each page turns reveals impossible truths about the world, and January discovers a story increasingly intertwined with her own. So it sounds kind of like mythical. It kind of reminded me a little bit about um, Alice in Wonderland kind of context. So that's why I picked it up. And of course the cover is so pretty and I had a book credit. So yeah, there's that. The next book, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it, but I'm going to give it a try. It's another September, 2019 release for book of the month. And it's called bringing down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. It's a historical romance. Um, let me just go ahead and pop this open. It's England, 1979, read that way too fast, 1879, brilliant but destitute Annabelle Archer is one of the first female students at Oxford University. Her scholarship demands that she recruit men of influence to, sh to champion the rising women's suffrage movement. Her target, the cold and calculating Duke of Montgomery, commander of Bryn's politics. But Montgomery wouldn't be the kingdom's greatest strategist if he couldn't turn the tables and confront Annabelle with an altogether different offer. Locked in a battle with rising passion and possible attraction, Annabelle will learn what just what it takes to topple the Duke. So I am a little hesitant about this book because I love historical romances to some degree. Um, but the content matter is not really grabbing me. Uh, the fact that it's this woman that is supposed to be getting this guy on her side for the women's suffrage movement and they somehow managed to fall in love in the process, it's, it feels like it kind of um, takes away from the whole, I don't know, power of, you know, women's rights and whatnot. But that's just me. I'm going to give it a try. I've heard mixed reviews about it, but we'll see. We'll see. It might be the best book I've ever read. You never know. That's the that's the whole beauty of reading. So a book that could be total garbage to one person could be something amazing to you. So, uh, next book I picked up is actually from August 2019 and is Mind Games by Shanna Silver. This is another book of the month. If you guys hear crunching and bag raffling in the background, my husband's eating Fritos. He doesn't see me glaring. There's way too many Fritos in here. He's a train wreck. But anyway. Oh, we gotta fix that air conditioning in that room. Anyway, this book is a young adult. And it is kind of um not necessarily dys dystopian. Did I say that right, husband? Dystopian. Mm -hmm. It's not really a dystopian theme. Um, but it follows a girl by the name of Arden. Arden sells memories. Whether it's becoming homecoming queen or studying for the all-important test, Arden can hack into a classmate's memories and upload the experience for them just as they had lived it themselves. Business is great until the day Arden looks up and sees a boy crossing the schoolyard. 
The boy, her friend, assures her she's known for years. The boy she can't remember. Artemson realizes that her own memories have been hacked, but they haven't just been stolen and shared. They've been removed, and she's not the only one. Sebastian, the boy whose existence has been wiped from her memory, has lost all his memories. Together, they must find the hacker to retrieve their missing memories, but how can they stop someone who has the power to make them forget everything they've learned? So I was excited about this because um, I don't... I don't know, just the context of uh, the hack hacking and how our technology today is so derived on like sharing memories via technology. So whenever you get on Facebook, you have your memories pop up, pop up. And I always find it kind of fascinating that we've reached that level in our technology that sometimes we have to be reminded of our memories through social media. Um, so I'm looking forward to this read as well. I think it is going to be an interesting um, thriller, if you will. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and jump. I'm trying to categorize as I talk to you guys because there's a lot of books that are true crime related. And there's a reason why I want to discuss those books. So we'll just jump over into some more fiction. Um, the next book I picked up, and this is because of Chelsea, once again, from Chelsea Dolling Reads, always recommending these really awesome books. Um, she recommended this book, Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills, and it's got a pretty cover. It reminds me of my knitting for some reason. I don't know. Um, but she talked about this book, and she really enjoyed it. When Claudia accidentally eavesdrops on an epic breakup of Paige and Iris, the it couple for school, she finds out and finds herself in hot water with prickly, difficult Iris. Thrown together against their will into a class production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, along with the goofiest, cutest boy Claudia has ever known, Iris and Claudia are in for the eye-opening senior year. Smart, funny, and thoroughly wonderful flawed Claudia navigates the world of intense friendships and tentative romance in this book about expanding your horizons, allowing yourself to be vulnerable and accepting and loving people for who they really are. Um, Chelsea really liked this book in particular because it has like a boy band mention in it. Like um, the, the one of the main characters or actually both of the main characters really enjoy this particular boy band. So they connect on that level and currently much to my husband's dismay, I've been really enjoying listening to the Jonas Brothers lately. It's driving him absolutely nuts. But yeah, this is going to feed my boy band junkie kick right now. So uh, next book I picked up, and you guys are going to be shocked. I have never read this book. So I went ahead and picked it up at Joseph Beth, and that is The Night Circus by Aaron Mor Morgenstern. Honestly, everybody and their mother has talked about this book. It's been out for years. Um, I went ahead and picked it up because, are you done? <laughs> I went ahead and picked it up because everybody for years have been discussing it. And one of the things I found very intriguing is it, it talks about the circus, circus that arrives at night and performs at night. It's kind of got that goth vibe to it. I'm really down for that. But it also has two young magicians by the name of Cecilia and Marco. And they're supposed to rival against each other, but they end up falling in love. So it just seems like it's everything that my little 2002 emo heart can possibly ever want in a book. So I picked that up. And let's see. I also picked up, let's see, uh, The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. Now, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this book. It does talk about infertility, and that's something that I personally have dealt with myself um, and having issues conceiving and all that. Everybody is making noise in this room. I love it. I love you, husband. I love you, Moose. Yeah, just sniff your butt, Moose. I'm talking to my dog. But anyway, um, this book has supposed to be like a romantic comedy thing where the main character has issues with um, fertility and she 
struggles with those issues. At the same time, she's at her best friend's wedding and she meets the best man and obviously something happens there. But I've heard mixed reviews about this because it kind of has a less than realistic approach to the fertility um, questions in here. So you guys know how I am. I really like to have realism in my books as much as possible. I'm I'm a realist at heart. I ask why, how, and whatnot. I'm probably the most annoying person when it comes to a book because I want to know the details and how they get to the logistics of everything. So I feel like this might be a little bit of a stretch for me, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. I'm going to keep an open mind and see what comes about it. Um, so the next book that I am going to discuss, hopefully, maybe, yes, yes, um, the next book that I picked up was a memoir, and that memoir, actually the next three books are memoirs, so to speak, that memoir is Lisa Schwartz, 30 Life Crisis, Navigating My 30s, One Drunk Baby Shower at a Time. Um, this is essentially more like essays as follows, um, the YouTube channel, um, creator, yeah, YouTube creator, Liz Bug, um, I'm sure you've probably seen her a lot on your YouTube feed when you, uh, get onto YouTube, uh, her ex-boyfriend is, uh, Shane Dawson, who I, I actually enjoy his content as well, he's, he's kind of an interesting character, but um, this talks about her life, essentially, um, her relationship with Shane, um, how things went down with that. So I'm looking forward to reading this. It sounds like it's going to be funny. It's a quick read. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge Lizbug fan, per se. I just happen to find that it was interesting. She released a book and, and Shane was involved with it. I just... I like Shane's content, so I decided I was going to pick it up and give it a go. On the next book, this should come as no surprise to anyone that knows me, is the memoir um, by Ben Foltz, I Dream About Lightning Bugs, A Life of Music and Cheap Lessons. I am a huge Ben Foltz fan. I've been a huge Ben Foltz fan ever since I was a teenager. My husband hates them, and he's making uh, faces as I'm discussing it, but I don't care. Um, I'm hoping hoping, maybe he's listening, that we could go to the show um, at the Taft in October to see Ben. Um, but my husband is giving me that critical look. But we're, you know, we'll discuss this off camera. Anyhow, um, I'm really excited about this book. I really enjoy his music. Um, and he grew up in North Carolina in like the 1960s, 70s. So he has had an interesting life, and I think this book is going to be entertaining. So there's that. Um, the next book is not so much a memoir, but it's like, um, I don't want to even say it's a self-help book. I want to say it's like a self-love book. Um, the Body is Not an Apology, The Power of Radical Self-Love by Sonia Renee Taylor, I showed this to you guys a while back ago. Um, I actually picked this up because my friend is coordinating um, a meditation slash book review of this book um, later on, hopefully in the next couple of months. Um, we've been back and forth, and I know that he's been kind of working through some things with the, the event itself. Um, but yeah, I'm halfway through this book already. It's a really incredible look at um, just cultural references, what we look at in terms of the standards of beauty and the body. Um, it discuss our obsession with like makeup and the, the, the obsession to be thin or to be this ideal body and exactly what is the ideal body. Um, this book is a very quick read. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It really made me stop and think about things. Um, there are still uh, halfway through the book that I still have to read. Um, but as you could tell, I really marked this sucker up. So I, I like went through and like was marking, making notes and such. I really enjoy um, books like this that make you think about 
well, think outside the box, if you will. So I uh, got this on Amazon. I believe it was 13 something, but just recently they had the Kindle version. I don't know if it's still this. It was either 99 cents or a dollar last night. Not 99 cents or a dollar. 99 cents or a dollar 99 um, last night. So yeah, very good read. Very insightful read. Now we're going to go into my favorite part of this little haul, and that is my true crime book collection that I just recently got. So I'm obsessed with true crime. I've been obsessed with true crime for the longest time, and it's just been revitalized ever since I discovered um, True Crime Obsessed, the podcast I listen to with um, the hosts are Patrick Hines and... Jillian Pensavale. I had to think for a minute. I always forget Jillian's first name. Um, but they cover true crime cases. And ever since they started doing that, I've really invested back into listening to a lot of true crime content, reading about it. Um, oh, excuse me. And yeah, so I got a few books here. And during this segment, I want to give out a shout out to one of my new subscribers, but also um, somebody that I recently subscribed to as well. Her name is Simply Julie. I'm going to have her information down inside the description box below. She covers true crime cases. Um, there was one true crime that she covered, and it, it was based on... Um, trying to remember the name of the person. I totally forgot the name of the person. It was a woman that was killed about the same time as Lacey Peterson. She was way, way along in her pregnancy as well. She was like eight or nine months. She was found in the San Francisco Bay as well. Um, very close similarities. There are several similarities to that case and the Lacey Peterson case. And Julie from Simply Julie covered the whole entire thing. Um, the case is so obscure, though. And I, I think, unfortunately, at that time, um, because the woman was a woman of color, I don't think it got enough coverage as the Lacey Peterson case. Um, because Lacey Pe Peterson was perceived white, even though I think she was from a different ethnic background, if I remember correctly. Um, but she was also an upper middle class family, whereas this victim um, was clearly not white and also in a, kind of a lower middle class economic background and didn't have um, the economic resources, if you will, for a big search. It's a very interesting, interesting video. I recommend highly going over and check out Simply Julie. Um, because she covers so many different cases and that case has hardly been covered on YouTube. Um, in fact, that was like the first time I heard about that case outside of Kendall Ray covering it. So her information is down below. Check her out, but on to the other books that I want to discuss. So the next book that I picked up, it, it teeters between true crime and fiction. It's fiction. It's historical fiction, if you will, is Monday, Man Monday, yeah, let's try that again, Monday, Monday by Elizabeth Crook. It looks like this. Now, the book is about um, the shooting that happened in 1966 on the University of Texas campus. It focuses on the story of three characters that were essentially um, the victims. Now, if you guys don't know anything about the UT 1966 shooting, I highly recommend checking out the movie, The Tower. It's an animated slash, um, well, it's an animated documentary, but it has like images that were actually taken, like newsreels and such, um, and interviews from the victims itself. It is one of the first documented, um, modern day mass shootings that we had here in the United States that took place on a university campus. Very, very good documentary. I got my husband hooked on it and he thought it was really good too. But this is the book I picked up afterwards. So this story um, focuses on three kind of fictionalized characters that were a part of the shootings. 
um, one of the characters is actually pregnant. And um, that is something that is a true account. There was um, one of the people that survived that got shot was um, a pregnant student at the time and she lost her child. So there are triggers that are also going to pop up inside this book. Um, you're going to see loss of a pregnancy. You're going to see mass shooting and violence. Um, a lot of details in the book might be a trigger warning, especially in current times. So if you are interested in this book, take that into account before you can, you know, start your reading. Um, so this book is kind of a struggle to find. I, I end up finding a used copy on Amazon. I think it might be available on Kindle, but I'm not 100% sure if it's available in any other format besides used. Uh, take that into note if you consider it. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this as well. It is kind of a chunky monkey sort of read. It will take me some time to get through. Um, the next book I picked up that is True Crime. Um, and it probably will come as no surprise to you guys because it is inside of media right now is James Patterson's Filthy Rich. And it's just the billionaire's sex scandal, the shocking true story of Jeffrey Epstein. Um, I usually don't try to talk about politics on this channel, given the fact that there are so many different political views right now. And I don't want to offend anyone. Um, I care about everybody's opinion, but I really want to keep this channel as um, non-biased as possible. That way, everybody feels welcome. Um, but this book covers the case of Jeffrey Epstein um, and uh, the allegations that were taking place prior to his death. I'm not going to label it suicide or anything. Um I am a little leery about this book, too, though, because even though it's James Patterson, um, I'm not a huge fan of James Patterson. He's okay. Uh, a lot of people weren't really thrilled with this book. They gave it three stars, and I think it, it was because it's not a fictionalized account. It's actually a true story. Um, so sometimes it could probably be dry to some people. It could probably be... Um, too factual and not have that element of keeping you on the edge of your seat because you already know the case. So I feel like um, the Goodreads review rating of it highly affected the fact, um, was highly affected because of the content of the book. It's not a James Patterson book as many people would consider it. Uh, so I did pick this up at the Barnes & Noble sale. I think it was like half off. And I'm going to give it a read. It does talk about um, a contributor or somebody that had an affiliation with Jeffrey um, Epstein that was from Columbus, Ohio. And it's actually a well-known name that I recognized off the bat. So I'm very curious to see how this person's connected in all these web of web of crazy. So... Yep. Um, the next book I picked up, and I don't know if I talked to you guys about it or not. I might have. If I did, I apologize, is Mind Hunter, and it's inside the FBI's elite serial killer, well, serial crime unit. I, I want to say serial killer because, well, you know. Um, but I also picked up in the same order this book here on um, the killer across the table unlocking the secrets of serial killers and predators with fbi's original mind hunter um both are from jack uh john douglas and mark olshaker that's what they look like so if you guys are familiar with um netflix or if you have a subscription to netflix you'll probably see um that they've been putting out a lot of previews for the second season of mind hunter I wasn't a huge Mindhunter fan until this past month, and then somebody told me, have you watched this? And I watched it, and it is amazing. Amazing. It, it's like my version of Orange is the New Black. It is the bomb. I love it. Um, and this is actually, these two books are actually based on those characters from the Mindhunter. So in the TV show, they talk to Charles Manson. 
they talked to Ed Kemper. Um, a little side note, Ed Kemper is actually one of the pioneers in the prison system that uh, got prisoners a program um, in place where they could actually read books, like do audio books for all these big time publishers. Um, Ed Kemper was is on several of those audio books. I did not know this at all. Some of them are even children's books, but he had such a, a very calming, soothing voice. Um, and, you know, these publishers heard his voice through his interviews and such. I thought he had such a good vocal range that they recruited him to read these books. And, um, I guess they were compensated in some way. Um, I don't know how they were compensated. I don't know if it was physical money or how that works in the the uh, judicial system, but they were compensated. And Ed Kemper kind of oversaw this whole program. So it's still in existence today from my understanding. It's a mind. It just blew my mind. It still blows my mind. But anyways, they talked to mine Kemper, the, to Ed Kemper, and they talked to Charles Manson. Um, they talked to several people. And the great thing, oh, they talked to Ted Bundy, I think. I think they did talk to Ted Bundy at one point and had a conversation with him. But um, they, this program is like the pioneer program for the FBI because when it initially started... They didn't have anything in place. Um, the term serial killer was not something known in the 1970s. They just called it mass mur murders or mass deaths. Um, and then John Douglas and another fella came along and put, basically put serial killer out there as a terminology and came up with a system of how to profile a serial killer. And they did like scientific research to see um, what similar pattern patterns serial killers had. Like if they came from a broken home, um, how that would link together. It's really interesting stuff. If you guys haven't checked out the show, please check out the show. But these two books do discuss um, those cases and how they create the profile um, system that they use up to this day. Very interesting stuff. Uh, the next book that I picked up is, I'm excited about this book because I got it for like eight bucks. Um, it's a new book that was released and it's um, by the people that created the podcast, My Favorite Murder, Karen Killereff and Georgia Hardstark. Hardstark? There we go. Um, it's a dual memoir by them and it's Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered, The Definitive How-To Guide. I love it. I love it so much. But um, I picked this up at Books A Million and it was 50% off. Um, and it talks about these, you know, women that study true crime and how they became friends and all sorts of fun stuff. So this one is fairly new. I think it was just literally released this year, wasn't it? Oh, they make it so hard to find the release date. Yeah, 2019. So I think I picked it up about two months ago. It was on the new releases and it was 50% off. So last book I got here is actually another book of the month. Um, this is from July 2019. I got it in my August box. I was so shocked I didn't see it in July. But it's American Predator, the hunt for the most meticulous serial killer of the 21st century um, by Maureen Callahan. And it looks like this. Um, this is a most recent serial killer. And this people have been talking about this book on the Book of the Month group. Them And... Um, saying that it, it's one of those books that when you read it, you don't want to read it by yourself because it'll scare the hell out of you. Um, one woman said that she could not sleep after reading it, but it follows the story of Israel Keys, who's one of the most ambitious and terrifying serial killers of modern history. Um, the FBI considered his behavior unprecedented and a force of pure evil. Um, that was what a prosecutor said about him. So he actually had kill kits that he buried um, around um, 
wherever parts of the country he was in that had cash, weapons, and body disposal tools. Um, yeah, he he's he's one sick person. That, that's for sure. Um, and this kind of breaks down his case. I have been studying true crime for a long time. I've looked up all kinds of serial killers. He's the first one I never even heard of. And people have said that he's very underestimated um, in the true crime community. Not many people have heard of him. So immediately when I saw this on my book of the month add-ons and read the description of it, I was like, I have to read this because this guy is a piece of work. Yeah, those are the 16 books I have right now to show you. Um, like I said, definitely check out um, Simply Julie. I, I'm i starting to get really into her content. I just discovered her literally on Friday, I think. Um, I went to her channel and started watching things yesterday evening when I got home. Creepy, creepy stuff, but good content altogether. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books or if there's a particular genre that you think I might be interested in checking out or a book that I might be interested in checking out. I will definitely um, take it into consideration. My husband's ignoring me. He's not saying anything about purchasing new books, so I think we're good. Okay, he's either ignoring me or he's dead in his chair. Either way. I have an alibi. I was filming. So I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for choosing to spend your days with the book bitch, as he likes to call me. And I love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.